66 on the petition of the residents of Holman Lane and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $80,000 to be expended for the purpose of installing a, installing a gravity sewer system for the use of the easterly six homes on Holman Lane, who will then connect to the new sewer line at their expense, thereby eliminating the current sewer ejector pump systems that are failing. Majority vote required, not recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 410, not recommended by the Budget Committee, 10 to 1 to 1. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2014 tax impact is 2.9 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 36? Anybody want to move Article 36 to the floor? Your name, Larry? Bill Budenhagen, a resident of Holman Lane. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Latimer. Is there anyone who would like to speak to Article 36? Sir. Thank you. Yes, uh, Bill Budenhagen. I've been a resident of uh, Holman Lane, two Holman Lanes since uh, 87. And the point I just want to emphasize about this uh, article is that the residents are prepared to pay what has to be done from the residences to the sewer line. And what it is, it's the, um, it's the sewer line to be connected to Mill Road. It's about uh, maybe 120 feet from where the uh, sewer ends in front of our house. And uh, a proportion of this cost is also not just for the sewer line, but it's also the uh, first 180 feet of the road are in need of repair because the drainage is kind of poor, poor. The manhole cover keeps getting a sinkhole around it. And also um, there's a few other spots where the drainage isn't that good. So it's not just for repair of this sewer for these residences, but it's also for the street itself. Um, it needs a little, a little repair work, which is part of that uh, figure of $80,000. And I just want to say it on behalf of the residents. Thank you for the courtesy. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 36? Yes, sir. Steve LeBranch, 469 Ocean Boulevard. I just want to mention that um, I'm familiar with the uh, with Holman Lane. I actually, at one time, owned a house at the corner of um, of Mill and Watson. And I will say that uh, it's very wet there. The house that I owned, um, the, the pump never stopped for the sub pump year round. Now, these houses on Holman were built just prior to um, the house that I bought that was new in 1993. Um, when these houses were built by one builder, he put in um, pumps. Each house has its own pump and a tank, a holding tank, and it pumps up. It's connected to the town sewer. It pumps up and goes across an easement over to Lafayette Road because at the time Mill Road didn't have uh, sewerage. When I bought my house in 93 it had sewerage so it must have gone in a, a year or two after, after uh, this gentleman that was just here speaking um, because he said he bought his house in 87. The thing is that the pumps, the houses are now 30 years old so some of the pumps need to be replaced and to the cost of perhaps four or five thousand dollars each, okay? Six houses times five thousand. And of course, the pumps, when these people bought these houses, they bought them knowing that this is what they have, okay? They knew that it has a pump and a holding tank and it pumps it up to the sewerage pipe that connects to Lafayette Road. So I'm of the opinion that they have something that does work, okay? It hasn't failed. It does work. And if, I, if it was my house and I had a pump that was perhaps not uh, running too well or was given a problem, then I'd certainly, without hesitation, go out and get it fixed. And as a matter of fact, if I still lived in that house on Mill Road, I'm sure that I would have a uh, backup generator 
to go on because if the electricity went off, the, the cellar would have filled with water within an hour. So I'd probably, I know that if the electricity goes off, the sub pumps at these houses, they're only going to work, well, they're not going to work at all, and, but you've still got 300 gallons tank that's a holding tank. And once that's filled, you've got to stop running the water or you're in trouble or perhaps get a generator as a backup. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Ms. Latimer. Uh, Eileen Latimer, 251 Mill Road, and I'm speaking as a resident, not as a member of the Budget Committee, specifically on this particular Warren article. You would have had to have been here in 1985 um, when I came to town and I bought my house. This street was developed um, across the street for me, as a matter of fact, the developer once owned my house. I'm not part of this, by the way. I'm on Mill Road, so I got sewer a little bit later and had a leach field before that. But things were done basically with a temporary mindedness back then because the proposal for sewage going down Mill Road was beginning to be developed. Excuse me. Oh. So I don't know. I wasn't part of buying any of these houses. I wasn't part of the development. I was only part of the neighbor with problems of my own with my leach field biding my time. I don't think these systems were ever meant to be permanent, but were done sufficiently for the time while the pipe came down Mill Road. Because this only affects six houses on this street. The rest are tied into sewage going out to Route 1. I think the idea being this was going to be closer to maintained from the Mill Road side than it was sending everything out the other end and down off Route 1. So I think the point I'm trying to make here is this was never meant as the ultimate system. And as many of us have experienced, you know, I, I used to once brag about I never lost power. It might flicker, but up on Mill Road, we, we almost never lost our power, no matter what happened. Have a hurricane, didn't matter. Go to Eileen's house, she had power. We're not, we're not experiencing that anymore, and I think it compounds the situation. When you can't flush your toilets, I don't care if you have a 300-gallon tank, it depends when the power goes off, whether it's full or not, you have a problem. There were promises made long ago, although they were probably all verbal and not written down. And you're talking about a 100-foot section of pipe that may or may not cost that amount of money. Um, but as we develop things, and from a development standpoint, don't make sure for posterity that things are right, we sometimes have to go back and revisit the things that we've done to make it right for our residents. I know that seems a little shallow for people on the west side of town that have um, been waiting for decades for sewer to go there, but I really feel this is a unique problem for my neighbors. Um, and they're willing to ante up on their side to tie in and whether or not the road can be paved now or not because that's part of that $80,000, maybe not. Um, but if it's not considered and voted for, I hope, that at the end you will bring it up and consider it again because I think they're left in a terrible predicament that they didn't, they didn't ask for at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. Is there anyone else who wants to be heard for the first time before I go back to Mr. Budenhagen? Seeing none. Sir. Uh, on behalf of the uh, residents affected, I would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, the town manager and the uh, folks at the DPW for working on the warrant article to uh, work the numbers and so forth. And we appreciate that effort that was put in on behalf of the, uh, the residents. And I just wanted to thank them for that. And um, enough said. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the courtesy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones, you wish to be heard on Article 36? Please. Okay. The uh, Budget Committee voted 10-1-1 to not recommend this. We did give it 
uh, thorough consideration at our hearing. And as one of the ten, my vote was cast on the simple basis that these people bought into the situation. It is not the taxpayer's responsibility to bail them out. Yep. If you run the numbers, they claim it's six homes that are affected. It's about $13,000 per home. If you estimate the increase in value that would result if they fix it themselves, they'd, they'd actually be ma making a profit. You got that. So let them go ahead and make their investment and make their profit. It's not for the taxpayers to bear the expense and not get the profit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Seeing no one else on Article 36, it will appear on the ballot as printed. Article